All right, so now we're gonna add our project into Sublime Text. So if you don't have Sublime Text, download Sublime Text. We're doing, we're using number two, unless number three is out, then you can use number three, uh, but download Sublime Text two, and that's what we'll be working with for the remainder of this project as our text editor. That being said, you can use any text editor. We've used Komodo Edit in the past. You can use that. You can stay with that if you'd like, um, but I'm gonna be using Sublime Text going forward. All right, so now with Sublime Text, what we're gonna do is we're gonna save the project of Sublime Text in the root of the virtual environment. So the folder that has been include lib and lwc, otherwise our Django project. Just gonna add it in there real quick. So open this up and go file, save project as, and then you're gonna navigate to your desktop and then LWC where or wherever you saved your your virtual environment and then I'm gonna call it the same thing which is LWC hit save and then I'm going to add a folder to the project which will be also LWC so if we go into LWC I will add that in as well uh, but before I actually add it um, I will make note that most of the time I've been changing this to SRC for a source and the reason I do that is to make sure that when I'm in my virtual environment, I know right away that's the source, that's the source code, that's where I want to go. So in this case, that's also what I will call this. Um, so I'm gonna call it source. It's just a styling thing. Um, you can keep it the name of the Django project if you'd like, uh, but what I just changed doesn't actually change anything about your project. It just changes the folder that it's held in. All right, so if I open that up, uh, I've got all these different files, something you will not see is you won't see this dot get ignore, you won't see this license, and you definitely won't see this readme. So you won't see those three files, and the only reason you see them on mine is because it's also on GitHub. So this is gonna be the code. Um, it's very blank right now because I haven't actually updated it except for what I just did. And this is where you'll actually be able to go and check out the latest version of the code. Um, if there's any issues or suggestions that are worth um, checking out, I will update Coding for Entrepreneurs GitHub account launch with code. So I'll actually update this specifically. Um, so this would be a way to check that stuff out. All right, so now that we have some basics done, let's look at our site. We have this and well, we don't have a whole lot here. And what it says is we don't have any URLs configured. Um, so what we have to do is talk about URLs and let's make our first one. All right, so I'm gonna open up a, the urls.py file in this LWC folder here. So this is the configuration folder, the main root configuration folder for your project. So just think of it as your configuration folder. And what would give it away is there's this file in here called settings.py. Settings usually has to do with configuration, so configuration folder. All right, so I have my URLs here, and if I open this up, we see, well, we see these different patterns and stuff like that, but what I see here is admin, and it says include admin site URLs. Well, we already went to slash admin before. Uh, I gotta make sure that this server is running, of course. So let's do python manage.py run server. Okay, so now the server is running. And I go back in here and refresh. All right, so this is the admin. So what we see here is we have a URL specifically for admin and it takes us to this admin login screen. Well, what if I change this to code and I refresh in admin? Well, now it's saying the page is not available. And if I do code, it, it actually says it. So if I actually go to admin again, uh, it's going to say page 404, not found. This is a page not found error. Um, so that's actually a good thing. So this is showing us that it actually works. And this is fairly straightforward. If I just change that back to admin and I refresh a couple times because the server sometimes has to restart. So even if refreshing doesn't work, you can go in the server, cancel it out, and then run the server again. Uh, that will allow uh, it to make sure that the latest code is actually being run correctly. Um, so we see this page actually working. So that's all that it did. Now, we can also add our own URLs in here. And of course, that's what you'll end up doing. Now, this first one up here is kind of an interesting one because it comes in as an example. 
But if I uncomment it, so the hash is a comment in Python. If I uncomment it, it will allow me to have a brand new URL that doesn't have anything except for this dollar sign. Well, what that dollar sign means is it's ending the string. Um, this is what's called a regular expression and it can get fairly complicated as far as how to actually design your own regular expressions for this. Um, so I'm not gonna show you all of that, but I will say that some of the basics are easy to, to understand. And the dollar sign, the fact that it means in the string that what the program's doing it, when it's looking for a URL, it's gonna come to this document, it's gonna look through here, and then it's going to look through all these different URLs that we have set up and or the URL actual mapping or the URL pattern actually set up. So if there's a dollar sign that ends the string, then it knows that it can actually pass over this one. So if I had a, another thing after this, right? So if I had something that would actually handle the URL after, it would do that because of this dollar sign. So if that dollar sign wasn't there, it would it would not necessarily go down more, right? So that dollar sign is basically saying, hey, this URL pattern is done um, after whatever. So if I did ABC and I had that dollar sign, it's gonna say that this URL pattern is done after ABC. So if whatever we're looking at is not there, then it will keep going. All right, that might not make sense completely. So let's actually test it out. All right, so now that I have this uncommented and I go back in and I just go to the home page. I see this error now, it says view does not exist. So let's actually comment it out again, do a refresh. Ah, so this is a case where I have to cancel the server and then run it again, and now refresh, and it says it works. Okay, so that's how those URLs work, right? So it's allowing me to handle that first page. So what it does is it uses whatever that URL pattern is. So in this case, there is no pattern, it's just the main home page here or the index page if you're familiar with HTML. Uh, so it's the main home page and it allows us to say, okay, there's this main home page here. This is the pattern for it. And now it's looking in what's called views. And in this case, it's going to look for a view that handles the way this page is supposed to look, right? So if, if, if I don't have anything set up here, it's either gonna throw an error or it's actually going to show us this, right? So if I kept this commented out, it would, it would continue to show this, congratulations, you have your first Django Power page. But I'm gonna keep it uncommented and then go back and refresh in here again. Now it's saying view does not exist. Well, it's looking under lwc.views.home. All right, so let's look at our lwc folder here. And we notice that there's not a file in here called views. Right, so the way we can actually call Python files is by this dot notation, right? So lwc.views.home allows us to call a file called views and then something in views called home, right? So lwc is a folder though, so how is it registered as Python? Well, that's what this init.py file does. It's blank but it's telling the program that, hey, this folder treat it as if it was Python or treat it like a Python folder or a Python file even. So init.py essentially makes this into a file so all of these things can be accessed. All right, so aside from that technical stuff, we need to make this thing happen. So let's actually go ahead and create a new file. So file, new file, or command in to be faster, and then command S to save it. And inside of LWC, we want to put views.py. All right, so I'm creating a new file called views, and this view is going to handle this URL, right? So it's going to handle this URL pattern right here. All right, so we have LWC as in the folder here, then it goes into views, which is this, and then it's looking for something called home. And this is a name, so this is a nickname. We will use this later, so you can ignore that for now. Uh, but it's going into the configuration folder, and then it goes into views and then home. All right, so let's go back in here. We see this one, it says, uh, view cannot import views.home. Parent module lwc.views does not exist. So we just made lwc, so that parent module now exists. So if I refresh, now it says view does not exist in module lwc.views. So we need to create our first view. 
and a view is just a function or there are function based views but there's also class based views but for now we're going to be doing function based views so in python to write a function you just do def so define the function and i'm going to call it home and then i'm going to return something okay so this is a basic python function now it's going to take in some stuff um, and the way we need to understand this is how every website works, right? So if I go to any website, it's, it's a, called a request. So I actually go to that website and I'm requesting something. So what I need is a response in return. So for every time you go to a website, you request something and it returns a response. Request, response, request, response, request, response. It happens so much that it's like crazy, right? So every website that you ever go to, that's what happens. Request, response, request, response, request, response. That's exactly what's going on here. So with our view, it's now being mapped. So it's being sent for this specific URL. It's being sent to views.home, which is this function. And what's happening is a request is actually coming through. So, it's, so when it's being sent that way, what's being sent is a request. A request has now asked, asked for this URL or the pattern that matches this URL. And that pattern is gonna be sent or that request will be sent to the function home. So we can actually use that as a parameter into our function. So now that we have this request, we can we actually have to return something back to that request. So what I wanna do is actually, I want to render some type of template. And uh, what I'll do here is I'll actually import. So from Django.shortcuts import render. So what render is going to do is it's going to render a template for us that will allow us to actually see this home page. So I'll do render, render, and then request. It takes in the request and then a template name. So I'll just write template for now as a variable and then our context. So template equals to some template. So I'm just going to call it home.html and then context, uh, not as a Sorry, context is supposed to be just context like that. Um, so context is going to be a dictionary, a Python dictionary that we put stuff in. We're not going to worry about context right now, uh, but that's what we'll do. All right, so we have to actually make a template for this homepage, right? So we have set up a function that's now going to handle our homepage, and it works out great. So let's actually go ahead and look here. If I do a refresh, we should see now that view does exist. Uh, but we'll see another error. So if I refresh, it's gonna say template doesn't exist. So this is something that's really nice about Django. A every step along the way, it will show you there's an error. So you can constantly be testing this stuff to see whether or not there's an error with something that you're trying to do. And in this case, a template doesn't actually exist because we named the template, but we did not create the template. So now we actually have to create the templates. And in order for us to do that, there's a few more things that we have to do, uh, but I'm actually gonna leave it here for now. We will come back to templates after we discuss a little bit more about settings. So this was your first view. Uh, there's a lot more to views than just this, but the nice thing is with views, if I copy this here and I said home two, and then I change this to home two, I could go in, copy this and change this to home two, then home two, and then I can go to that URL of home two, so I can copy this, do a refresh in here, go slash home two, and template does not exist at home two. And if I add that trailing slash, it's gonna say page not found. Ah, that's not good. Well, that means I just need to add a slash here. And if I refresh, now it works. And if I take it away, it still works, right? Um, so that's something that kind of note, but that's how I can make pages. So if you, we're getting really close to basically allowing you to make an HTML website using just Django. So if you just knew HTML, we're getting really close to actually just being able to do that, uh, which is pretty cool. And that also means that we will get pretty close to allowing a web designer to handle a lot of the actual design and look of it uh, based on how, on the, the path that we're currently on. I'm gonna comment this out, so we're not gonna use it. And then I'm also gonna comment out this one. 
The only reason I'm commenting it out instead of deleting it is so you can see it uh, on GitHub if you want. And um, something to note, the way I comment multiple lines out is just hitting command slash. Command slash will comment them out and uncomment them. And I believe it's control slash for Windows. All right, so that's it for now. That's adding our first view. In the next one, we'll actually add that template as well as talk about our settings file a little bit. All right, see you in the next one.